Chapter 7, Cleaning House Queen stood there for a moment looking at this Wakatilian that was surrounded by what she thinks to be Anakata's dress as Wakatilian and then she sees Obe standing in the back of them. Confused she scratches her head, wait a minute. You're the second person I have met in the middle of this desert. What is happening that you are here also? First the old man, Mletsi, and now. One Yekavu interrupted, hold on, you met Mletsi? Queen said, you know him? And he said, yes, but of course, he's the servant of Sabaoth, then Dark Eagle said, that's how I knew that name, he is the man that approached your grandfather to send you here all those years ago, I know, I knew that name. Just then, Mletsi appeared without saying a word as he walked over to Running Elk, Sabaoth has seen your faith and is proud of your service to him. Mletsi then touched. His forehead, you shall not feel pain any longer, my friend, for it's time to come home. You have asked Sabaoth for many things, but he has noticed your selflessness. He then pointed to Wanyanyekavu and waved for him to come forward, this is just the beginning of what you have asked. Sabaoth 4, Light in that which breaks the darkness. Your, Orso Nero, his name is Wanyanyekavu. Dark Eagle and Queen looked at each other when Letsy mentioned Orso Nero. A group of tall men, wearing all white appeared before them all as Mletsi continued, Your welcoming party is here, shall we go? In tears, Running Elk stood up and spoke to Wanyanyekavu, It is an honor to meet you. Wanyanyekavu took the man's hand, No, the honor is mine, for I have met those whom Sabaoth has chosen, and I wish I had met you sooner. Peace surrounds you, and I hope to accomplish what you have. Running Elk said with a smile, According to my desires. You shall do that and more, my son. The men in white surrounded running elk, and they all disappeared. Mletsi then took a seat on a large boulder, the rest of the elders, along with the warriors, may go home, for this was truly an ambush to kill you and take the land that you desire, but Sabaoth will. Now give you the entire city to have by yourself. An immoral people that Sabaoth shall destroy and chase the rest of them back to the place of their destruction. Queen, Dark Eagle, and his sons just stood there in awe as they watched what was happening, Dark Eagle, this is Liberté, that Sabaoth has renamed Wanyanyekavu, son of Tablita, Mletsi said as he turned to Dark Eagle, you have delivered Anaya from danger, and now Sabaoth shall deliver you from danger for your obedience and loyalty to him. He looked at Queen, Anaya, you were chosen to do great works and have done a great job thus far, and Sabaoth is pleased, but now it's time for him to take control of this matter. Then he turns to Dark Eagle's sons. Those whom you call your family shall be your enemies, and those whom you have called your enemies shall be your family. Think not that your family had become your enemies, for they were your enemies before they were even your family. Don't let the sadness consume you, knowing they have already conspired to kill you as we speak. Alemwa, Kisama, Nipahem, you are now. He pointed to each of them. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, for your bravery and humbleness from this day forward shall you be called. Sabaoth has ordained you'll to be the elders, for the elders. That are now will all be gone before the year ends, and Dark Eagle and Wanyanyekavu shall rule this land according to Sabaoth's will. Mletsi spoke to them for two hours before he disappeared. Queen sat there for a few minutes thinking about what was spoken by Mletsi when Wanyanyekavu approached her, smiling. Queen asked, you mentioned earlier you don't enjoy using the name Wakatilians. What did you mean by that? Wanyanyekavu asked, is it Queen, or Anaya? Queen said, only my family calls me Anaya, you can call me Queen. Wanyanyekavu said, okay, Queen, for centuries, they have given us names to describe or talk about us, and they are afraid to call us what we are, the true children of Sabaoth. It's not only in our skin but in our DNA which is why they have persecuted us. But they, too, can inherit the promise by faith through Mshika. Through jealousy and envy, they refuse and my name, I prefer to be called Wanyanyekavu, son of Tablita of the Natchez tribe. Or simply a child of the Almighty. Wanyanyekavu noticed Aldhib and the rest standing around, and he then said, Where are my manners? Let me introduce you to my family. 
This is Jonathan. Aldhib gave him a look, I am sorry, his name was Jonathan, his name is now Aldhib, his wife, Joy, and his brother Joam. Aldhib and Joam are so called Anakatas. Grace, Mercy, Elisha, Elijah, and Daniel are so called Compiutans. My mighty friend, Obey, who's also a so called Wakatilians. Since we have been together now, they have given us all a new name, Mestizos, but I'll explain that some other time. Oh, there is another Wakatilians, named Naraglisser, who is at home, he's in charge of our city, Madden at Altenwer. Queen looked at Wanyanyekavu, let me get this right. Joy is Kampiyutans, and she's married to an Anakatis named Jonathan, but Sabaoth has given him the name Aldhib. Aldhib raised his hand and smiled. Queen slowly waved and with a confused smile, she took a seat. Now, all the rest are Kampiyutans except for that big guy named. Obey? Wanyanyekavu said. Yes, and Obey was a bounty hunter and slave for Oedipus. Sabaoth has changed most of our names for the work he needs to be done in us and to show his people that he has not forsaken them. Queen said, if I hadn't seen Letsy, I would think you all were fools. Shaking her head, she said. Sabaoth is able, Wanyanyekavu replied, he is. Looking at the time, Queen said. The meeting was two hours ago. Please, it is going to take at least thirty more minutes to reach our destination, pointing. At their sky crafts, Wanyanyekavu said, no, about a minute. If you hop on, we will fly there. Dark Eagle and his sons tied down their horses and joined Wanyanyekavu and his team on sky crafts. Wanyanyekavu reaches for Queen's hand, ready? Queen and her family had never been on such a ride and it was scary and exciting at the same time. They stayed low enough to get to their destination but not high enough to scare them no more than they were already. Queen asks, how did you get these sky crafts? Altib said, it was Elijah's and my ideas, we had one, then a few we took after a few battles, and then before we knew it, we had more than we needed fighting Oedipus and his sons and just cross-engineered them with a few extras. Wanyanyekavu smiled, yep they are our local geniuses. Queen said as she inspected the bike, how are they so quiet? Jonathan and Queen started talking about engineering, and Wanyanyekavu was impressed by Queen's intelligence. Upon arrival, the people stared at them and questioned themselves, as they parked near the entrance of the meeting hall. Where? Did they get those fancy sky crafts? Who are these new people? Are they Wakatilians, Kampiutans? or Anacatus. Queen and Dark Eagle led the group in the meeting chamber. They look as if they were not even expecting us, said Dark Eagle. Wanyanyekavu saw everything, but he was forced to keep quiet until danger arose. I will let you speak, until it's time for me to speak. Trust me, please, for Sabaoth has shown me everything. Fear not what you see, for Sabaoth has given us gifts that will amaze you and you and yours shall receive your gift when Sabaoth deems you ready. Queen did not truly understand, but looked at Dark Eagle, and they both looked at Wanyanyekavu, okay. Wanyanyekavu looked around as he entered and took inventory of the men and weapons. There were sixty civilians and thirty armed men that surrounded the compound walls. Six men stood in the hallways as they entered the chambers, two at the door and six inside. As he walked inside, a long marble U-shaped table stood in the center of the room with twenty-four chairs on either side of the table. As they walked toward the table, down a small aisle, Wanyanyekavu noticed an Abenian pacing at the back of the table. It was apparent he was furious at their delay. As they walked in, he shouted, Do you think we have all day to wait on your motherfucking asses? Queen tried to keep her composure as she began to speak, sorry. But was rudely interrupted. Where are the elders? It is they who make the decisions. Is that not true? And who the fuck are these motherfuckers here? Queen began to speak again before Dark Eagle grabbed her arm, we will not be disrespected any further, either you speak to us in a respectful manner, or we will. Leave. The Abenian shouted, leave. Leave. 
Motherfucker, you're about to die, we'll kill the elders after we're finished with you. Wanyanyekavu touched Dark Eagle and Queen as the Abenian shouted, Guards. The guards outside the door and all the guards inside the chamber's hallways entered. Wanyanyekavu said, Wait, wait a minute, now. This is not a fair fight, you have eight arms, three legs, and a tail. You must have one hell of a reach, don't you? His comments confused Queen and the guards as he continued, When we are finished, the entire room shall die, and not one of us will have to break a sweat doing so. The Abenian said as he looked at himself in a mirror while the guards stood in the ready position, confused. What do you speak about, little man, and who are you? Wanyanyekavu smiled, I am Sabaoth's messenger, and we are your worst enemies. Oedipus and Abony B. Six have perished because of me and my men, and so shall you and your men. The Abenian opened its mouth to say something, but before he could get a word out. Wanyanyekavu threw a star, which struck the Abenian in his throat. As he grabbed his throat, he threw another one, and it penetrated the center of his skull, falling to the ground, revealing its identity before it incinerated into a puff of dark smoke. Wanyanyekavu shouted, Iwa! The guards surrounded them and attacked, but Grace raced towards them and slit each of their throats as they stood there gasping for air and holding their necks while the rest of the warriors killed them. They destroyed everyone in sight and left not one of them alive. Dark Eagle and his family just stood there in awe as. Wanyanyekavu said to Obe, you guys take care of the rest while me and Grace look around with Dark Eagle and Queen. Grace, with great speed, raced through the area, searching documents and computer files and checking for helpful information, I think you guys need to take a look at this. Grace said as she handed some documents to Wanyanyekavu. Wanyanyekavu looked over the documents and handed them over to Dark Eagle, I don't know these people, but it sounds like you have a big problem at home. Just then, Obe walked in with the rest, what about the civilians? Same as usual, let's see whose heart is in the right place, Wanyanyekavu said. As a matter of fact, it looks like there is a need for some spring cleaning at Dark Eagle's camp. So, I will handle the civilians, I need you and Daniel to take half of the men back home and send. A Mardad to decipher this information ASAP. The rest will stay here. I will take Dark Eagle and Queen back to their horses and return as soon as possible myself. Dark Eagle took the documents, I have to sit down, these last few minutes have me. Queen and her cousins took a seat next to Dark Eagle. Confused, Queen said, you want to explain to us what just happened? How? Wanyanyekavu smiled, Sabaoth, but I will explain it all on the ride back to your city. But I must first check these civilians. The men, women, and children all stood in a line waiting for Wanyanyekavu, I am not here to harm you, unless you try to harm me but I need to speak to each of you before I leave. Wanyanyekavu took less than 30 minutes to see all the people living at the site. He chose 20 people to stay while forcing the rest to leave. Daniel, Jom, and Alicia escorted the people out of the area while the rest were questioned and released. Wanyanyekavu prepared to leave alongside Dark Eagle, for Obe and Daniel had already left, leaving the rest behind to get rid of the bodies. A high officer, a family member, and a dear old friend are the masterminds behind the trafficking in the area, and it breaks my heart, said Dark Eagles with a heavy heart. As he gets on the sky craft, a young lady approaches Wanyanyekavu. Excuse me, sir. Wanyanyekavu smiles, yes, with tears in her eyes, she continues, my husband was escorted out, and I remain here. There must be some mistake. Wanyanyekavu looked at the woman, your husband has an evil heart and cannot and will not stay among us. The lady fell to the ground, sobbing. Wanyanyekavu got off the sky craft and sat down on the ground with the lady, you may go with your husband. You are not forced to stay here, but for me to allow such a man to live among us would be like allowing an infection to live within our body. Eventually, it will grow and consume us all. I tell you what, go and see if his heart changes. If so, he may stay, if not, he will continue to be an outcast, but you can come back. The lady got up, he can change, I know it as she ran after her husband. 
Wanyan Yekovish shouted, What is your name? She shouted back, Lila. Joan, Mercy, Alicia, and Elijah assisted Wanyan Yekovu with transporting Dark Eagle and his family to their horses. They headed back to the new location, they now call the watchtower and rushed back to finish helping with the cleanup. Wanyan Yekovu stayed and drove his skycraft alongside Queen as they headed back to Tucson. I've been waiting, correction, we've been waiting for you to explain the things we've seen today, and what is this? You are talking about you killed an Abenian and Oedipus. He's the most ruthless man in dead man's land, Queen said before Wanyan Yekovu interrupted, it's called Sabaoth's land now. Yes, we killed Oedipus and Abony B, 6, and now, whatever the one back there was named. These so-called Abenians are the fallen angels of Sabaoth who have come to destroy Sabaoth's people. I was born Liberté, and I'm from Lake Providence, Louisiana, as I mentioned before, and one day I had a dream that was so real, and a man appeared before me, and he was Mletzi, but he was a wolf. Wanyan Yekavu explained his entire story to them, and they all talked until they reached the front gate of their community. Wanyan Yekavu devised a plan so that no one would see Dark Eagle, just Queen, and her cousins. Dark Eagle escorted Wanyan Yekavu to a small hut in the back of his house, I believe you would be more comfortable here than in the house plus. This is where I come to meditate and get away. You may stay here for the night, everything you need is here, and when supper is ready, I'll have someone to come get you. Wanyan Yekavu thought for a moment and said to Dark Eagle, Thank you unsure how long I will stay, but tell no one about what we have discovered. Just call for a meeting for the entire community, let's say noon. Dark Eagle agreed as he walked toward the house, I know my wife knows by now with Queen and the boys in there, but she is faithful, and I'll tell the rest to keep it hush until tomorrow. Wanyan Yekavu immediately gets on his communicator, Obey? Obey replied, go ahead. Wanyan Yekavu asks, you still at Madden at Altenwer? Obe replied. No, I'm at the watchtower. A Mardad has located a list of names and functions in one of the largest trafficking rings I have ever seen. They were the main ones sending them to Oedipus. Wanyan Yekavu said, tell a Mardad. A Mardad interrupted, I'm here, go ahead. Wanyan Yekavu continues. Whatever you find, just continue to do at your leisure but I need Obe and the rest of them to be here about 11.30 a.m., and I need a few more people there to protect the watchtower. Obe returned by saying, Naraglisser was way ahead of you, he sent back 25 men, ready to go, when? We got there. One Inyekova laughed, one speedster and at least one healer, I bet. Unsure, if I can reach him from here, but tell him thanks. Obe said. Yep, one speedster and a healer. See you in the morning, over and out. Wanyan Yekavu, still laughing, replied, over and out. A knock on his door awakens Wanyan Yekavu. Supper is ready, if you're hungry, it was Queen. Opening the door, he said, I didn't even know I had drafted off. Let's go, I'm starving. Queen looked at Wanyan Yekavu, you are a proud Wakatilians, I see that, but you hang out with many non wakatilians why? Wanyan Yekavu smiled. Do you remember when Sabaoth told Peter and Paul to go get the Gentiles in the Torah? Queen said. Yes. Wanyan Yekavu stopped, this is the same thing. Sabaoth wants all of us, not just one group of people, but all who are willing to receive him. They continued walking before Dark Eagle greeted them at the back door, how are the commendations back there? Wanyan Yekavu smiled, very comfortable. I drifted off to sleep, and didn't even know it. Dark Eagle laughs, yeah, I know. I hope you love beef stew. Wanyan Yekavu smiled, yes, I do. While eating, they all discussed the plans for the next day and made all the arrangements for the entire city to see and hear the event. Early the next day, Obe and the rest of Wanyan Yekavu's warriors arrived at Dark Eagle's home and went over their plans. Afterward. Wanyan Yekavu said, remember, let everyone in, but don't allow anyone out, for the ones we are looking for, will try to escape. Because they will think Dark Eagle is dead, so when he approaches the podium, 
it should be when you see movement. The people started arriving at the old zoo, Reed Park, where they held their community meetings at 7 a.m., many came in, and by 8.30 a.m., a few strangers slowly entered the arena. The elders and Dark Eagle's sons sat at a table behind a podium. Dark Eagle's eldest son, Alemwa, approached the stand, we have unfortunate and disappointing news to tell you, but be of good cheer, for we have exciting news from Sabaoth as well. Myself, Kisama, and Nipahem, Sabaoth has ordained us as your new elders and has changed our names too. He pointed to them as he continued, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now, after a lengthy meeting this morning, some elders will continue to guide us, but many will step aside and allow Sabaoth to have his way. Kisama approached the podium as Alemwa continued, Now a word from my brother Kisama, or shall I? Say Meshach. Clearing his throat, Meshach paused as he looked around, Sabaoth must clear the way for his new plan for us, and by doing so, there are some changes that must be made for Sabaoth to do so. According to Sabaoth's new plans, all of Tucson is officially ours. The crowd roared. With excitement. This land and more shall be spread out and given to each family. But with new land comes new laws that must be carried out to the letter. These new laws will be handed to you with the deeds to the land. And now from our little brother Nipahem or shall I say a big bad negro, I'm sorry, Abednego. The crowd laughed as they cheered for Nipahem, I guess even though I'm the youngest, I'm also the biggest, so I'll take that big brother. Laughter was heard throughout the cheerful crowd, well, I guess I'll have to be the bearer of the bad news. The group quickly became silent, there are enemies among us who look like us, act like us, and speak like us. No, it's not the strangers you see on the sky crafts, those are our friends, no, they are family. They allowed us to receive the gifts we present to you today. Know this, and they are not only Wakatilians but Kampiutans and Anakatas as well. It shocked the crowd as he continued, these people are called mestizos because they are joined together by Sabaoth, for Sabaoth, and so shall we. Sabaoth wants us all to be as one in him. We have traitors in our midst who have betrayed us for monetary gain and for a position to sit at the table with Satan himself. They are our own people who live and eat with us, they are the one who has betrayed us. Wanyinyekavu and Dark Eagle stood behind a veil and waited for their cue, for the crowd did not see them. Wanyinyekavu heard a voice on his communication device. Wanyinyekavu, there is movement from the crowd, some are trying to leave. It was Joan. Wanyinyekavu replied, gather them as quickly and quietly as possible and place them all in jail. Abednego was still speaking. We have two new leaders who shall govern us and guide us to this new way in which Sabaoth has instructed. My father, Dark Eagle, and our new friend, Wanyinyekavu of Louisiana. Dark Eagle and Wanyinyekavu walked from the veil, and there were spots of confusion around the crowd, but it was quickly and quietly resolved. Dark Eagle approached the podium. Our meeting yesterday was an ambush to murder the elders, my family, and me, but Sabaoth sent us Mletsi and Wanyinyekavu to intervene in this plan and ordered us to clean house. Saying, those whom you call your family shall be your enemies, and those whom you have called your enemies shall be your family. Think not that your family had become your enemies, for they were your enemies. Before they were even your family. Don't let the sadness consume you, knowing they have already conspired to kill you as we speak. We have read the story of how Judas betrayed Mshika. He had the wisest teacher, he benefited from his teachings and learned more than anyone here today. Yet, his heart was not pure. This is how those who live amongst us shall forever be, for now on, you must be of a pure heart. Pointing to an elder, Dark Eagle said, Weeping Crane, here and a few others, has been trafficking our people to the Abenians and Oedipus for drugs, sex, and organs. They have been experimenting on how to delete our race from the planet through our DNA. I would be justified if I would walk up to him now and cut his throat from ear to ear, but death is too good for him. He must endure such pain, to cry out for death, but death will not hear his cries. All those you heard in the background are probably also involved. 
Myself and Wanyan Yekavu have agreed that life in prison will be better suited for these men. We lock them up here and ship them to. Turning to Wanyan Yekavu, he asked, What do you call it again? Wanyan Yekavu, standing by his side, Madden at Altenwer, it's a training camp where the prison is being built as we speak. Thank you, Dark Eagle, again, my name is Wanyan Yekavu, and I was sent here by Sabayoth. Wanyan Yekavu paused and looked at Queen, and the vision that Mletsi had shown him of his wife years ago flashes before him, as he continued, to do the will of Sabaoth, that was five years ago, and like Paul in the Torah, I travel and meet many on the way. I started by myself to come here alone, but Sabaoth brought these people into my life along the way. Since I left, Sabaoth has unexpectedly brought many others into my life, now, there are so many I have lost count. We have taken many cities and have converted many souls. The men on the sky craft are truly warriors of Sabaoth, and cleaning house is what Sabaoth wants, and it is what he shall get. Waving his hands at Queen, is there anything you want to say? Queen walked up to the podium, if there is no justice, there will be no peace. Once we straighten out the details, we will have another meeting in two days or so. We will have deeds ready for everyone from Picacho Peak State Park to the Watchtower, Madden at Altenwer, and from Madden at Altenwer to Colonia Anahuac. 489 miles of land, not just for us but for everyone that Juan Yekavu and his men deem as family. I have to say, no I must emphasize, that everyone must pull their weight until there is peace again, so please be patient as we conduct our business. Justice first, then peace, may Sabaoth bless you and thank you for your time. They arrested fifty people and put them all in jail, but the people already in prison demanded to be seen by Dark Eagle, Wanyanekavu, this is Daniel over. Daniel and Alicia tried to organize the jail while the people continued to shout, they wanted justice. Go ahead, Daniel. Said Wanyanekavu. We need Dark Eagle down here, many are saying that Weeping Crane jailed them, and they are locked up in here with him. Dark Eagle overheard the conversation. Do you mind handling that? I must rush off to my house to get some paperwork and get organized, there is so much work to do. Wanyanekavu said, sure. He jumped on his sky craft and headed to the jail. It was dark outside, and Wanyanekavu saw men gather outside in a fence to his left and right as he walked down a corridor leading to the jail's entrance. Opening the gates, he saw a room. Filled with people chained to benches as some of the locals assisted Daniel and Alicia. Looking around and opening the doors to the entrance to the jail cells, Wanyanekavu asked, Why does that light, down the hall, shine so bright? One of Dark Eagle's men looked strangely, there are no lights back there. Wanyanekavu walked down the hall and saw the men in their cells, he overheard a man reading as he approached the light. Dear Harriet, I am glad to know that the story of your eventful life has been written by a kind lady and that the same is soon to be published. You ask for what you do not need when you call upon me for a word of commendation. I need such words from you far more than you can need them from me. Wanyanekavu stood there and let the man continue, there was something different about him, but Wanyanekavu listened as the man continued to read, the midnight sky and the silent stars have been the witnesses of your devotion to freedom and of your heroism. Accepting John Brown of sacred memory, I know of no one who has willingly encountered more perils and hardships to serve our enslaved people than you have. Much that you have done would seem improbable to those who do not know you as I know you. Wanyanekavu said, that's the letter. That Frederick Douglass, wrote to Harriet Tubman. The man closed the book, yes, it is. Wanyanekavu said, who are you, and what's up with you shining like a light? Oh, you see it, my name is Friedrich, it's an Afrikaans name from the old German Frederick, which means, peaceful ruler, it is pronounced Frederich, and I'm from Azania, what used to be called South Africa. By the way, I have heard many pretty speeches before, beautiful words with lies and deceit mixed into them, but the words you uttered today had power, even from here, it was backed by Sharon A.F. Elohim. It means. Wanyanekavu interrupted, fire of God. Wanyanekavu was impressed with the man's demeanor, tone, and attitude. Friedrich said, handle your business, and let's talk later. 
Wanyin Yekabu said, No, let me get you out of here. Grabbing the man's hand, Wanyin Yekabu felt a burst of energy. Watch yourself. Friedrich said, I am filled with the Shekinah glory, but it's just a speck of a speck, for no man can contain the power of Sabaoth. It would consume me if I weren't enlightened, and I would have died the second it engulfed me. Wanyin Yekabu smiles, that's why you're glowing like a lighthouse. He turns to the guard, let this man out, feed him, and make him comfortable. Wanyin Yekavu then touched and talked to the old prisoners and released all but two, making room for the new ones. Later that night, he met with Friedrich as he walked in, Friedrich said, I am told by one of your warriors that you're an avid follower of history. Ever heard of Henry H. Goddard? Wanyin Yekavu said, Henry H. Goddard? Smiling, Frederick said. Yes, he started the Inhumane Psychology Research Laboratory, where Nazi-style experiments were carried out on innocent children in Vineland, New Jersey. It created the IQ test and other idiotic ideas that held many of Sabaoth's people back with his practices, just like Jim Crow and many more who were not of our race. We accomplished much, but got rewarded for none of it, like Solomon Linda, who wrote that song, The Lion Sleeps Tonight, that made millions. Yet, he nor his family got anything. The abuse, like the lynching of Mary Turner and her baby, or what about Ella Baker, the godmother of the civil rights movement, or Viola Desmond, a successful black businesswoman and entrepreneur who challenged segregation in a place that was once named Nova Scotia. She was the first black person and first non-royal woman on a Canadian banknote, or what about Natchez, Mississippi's devils. Punchbowl Obey walked by excuse me is your name Friedrich of South Africa? Friedrich smiled, why yes, I had a bounty for you, but his was much larger so I came after him first. Friedrich shook his head, good thing you did, now we all are here except one. Obey smiled, as he would say, Sabaoth is able. Wanyin said, indeed. 